Dr. David Azarad, as promised earlier, he's with the Heritage Foundation and uh, works there to help people understand more about America's founding principles. Uh, Dr. Azarad, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. So today is Constitution Day, and people prob- yes, they probably didn't know that unless they heard me mention it earlier. Um, uh, but but the, we, it's it's time to celebrate what our Constitution is all about. And you know, a lot of people they're, they're prob- there are a lot of myths about the Constitution, right? There are. But before we get to the myths, I mean, we should toast that our Constitution turns 229 years old uh, tomorrow. Wow! And uh, it's the oldest written national constitution in continuous use in the whole world. And I think that's something to be proud of as Americans. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even as we worry about portions of it being undermined, <laughs> that's uh, that's certainly something to celebrate. I would agree well, with you it, completely. You know, portions are undermined, but I think it's important to remember that they're undermined by uh, elected and unelected officials uh, in terms of how the words on paper are interpreted. But the words on paper haven't changed. I mean, there have been 27 amendments. For the most part, they're innocuous or they're, they're improvements on the Constitution. Uh, we can disagree about the 17th Amendment. I think conservatives play that up way too much. But at the end of the day, uh, if we wanted to start reading the Constitution properly, again, nothing stands in our way. I mean, the text is sound. The problem is with elected and unelected officials, for example, judges, and what they read into the Constitution and what they read out of the Constitution. Right. Yeah, that's, that's true. What are some of the common myths about the, our Constitution? Where, where to even begin? I think the, <laughs> the most pernicious and damaging one is that it's a racist document. Um, this pops up in heaven knows how many textbooks. It's in Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States of America. It's taught on college campuses. The New York Times casually mentions very frequently that according to the Constitution, blacks are worth three-fifths of a human person. And not only is that absolutely not true, it's a really damaging lie to be telling our fellow black American citizens, in effect telling them, you know, this Constitution wasn't made for you, and that our founding charters are not worthy of any respect because they're racist. So I think it does damage to the civic ties that should bind us together as Americans. But more importantly, it's absolutely not true. Nowhere in the Constitution, or in the Declaration of Independence for that matter, are human beings classified according to skin color, to race, to ethnicity, to religion, to sex, to sexual orientation. You pick the category, the oppressed group that the left focuses on. These categories don't exist in the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, myths pushed by the left uh, to to try to, to win a political point, no doubt. Yeah, that no one is denying that the reality on the ground at the time was not pretty. We had slavery, and then we had Jim Crow. But it's not because of the principles enshrined in the Constitution it's, or, and the Declaration. It's in spite of them. And, you know, this is something that Frederick Douglass understood in the 19th century. It's something that Martin Luther King understood in the 20th century. And yet the view today seems to be that because we couldn't deliver on the promise of America immediately, then the promise is bogus. And I don't see why we need to reach that conclusion. I, I love that point. Uh, one similar to what Dinesh D'Souza made in his movie America. I haven't seen it, so... Um, it, but but I, it's I a good point. His whole premise is, all these people talk about how horrible America is. What would have happened had George Washington been killed in battle and the United States, and we lost the war? What What yeah, would the well, world look like today? And what would have happened if uh, the northern states were unwilling to, to, uh, to compromise on the question of slavery and drafting the Constitution? Well, we would have had no union and therefore no potential to one day eradicate slavery. So our Constitution is not a pro-slavery document. If you want to see what a racist pro-slavery Constitution looks like, read the Confederate Constitution, which is replete with references to Negro slavery. That is a document that affirms and celebrates slavery. Our Constitution makes no mention of slavery. It refers to the slaves as persons, underscoring their humanity. And the document makes quite clear that it's an institution that you have to put up with, but it doesn't legitimize it or celebrate it, contrary to what we are told constantly. That's a good point. Is there, are there myths? I'm going to presume there are myths about the Second Amendment, 
simply because a lot of people believe it was put there to protect your right to hunt. Yes, or, or that it only applies to the militias and that it's not an individual right, which I think would have been used to, you know, any American for the first 150 years of our republic's existence. There are myths about the First Amendment, uh, that it somehow creates some sort of a radical separation of church and state. So, in a sense, we do have a separation of church and state in America. The First Amendment makes quite clear that we're not going to have a national religion and that all are entitled to religious liberty. But it doesn't declare a war on religion. It doesn't seek to eliminate any references to God in the public square. Right. This is a hardline, secular, anti-religious interpretation of the First Amendment that develops, starts brewing in the 50s and keeps on getting worse each year. So, you know, you could walk through, I mean, this is, the, you can look at the Constitution and see what are the provisions that have been mangled beyond recognition? What are the explicit ones that are ignored? And you see that uh, the, largely because of the courts, and then I should add, uh, the Congresses and presidents that are all too complacent and willing to let the courts get away with murder, uh, we have a reality that just doesn't align anymore with the text. Yeah, that's a very good point. We're talking to Dr. David Azarad with uh, the Heritage Foundation. Uh, you can go to their website, heritage.org, to read uh, more of his uh, uh, lengthy articles that he's got regarding issues on the Constitution. Dr. Azarad, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and happy Constitution Day. Same to you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. For people who weren't aware of that until you listened to this show today, there's actually a website, www.constitutionday.com. Pretty cool. With work with, with printable worksheets that you can give to your kids for teachers and stuff, I guess. that, that I had no idea that existed. 